Welcome and hello. Welcome to Cannabis Marketing Live, all puff, no fluff, where we are bringing you the most brightest, boldest, and most badass people in CBD, hemp, cannabis, all of the different areas. We are here for you. So today we have Matthew Gagne. Hopefully I said that right. CEO and founder of Flock Goods. And Matthew has a really interesting background, one that I'm sure you guys don't hear very often. He is an entrepreneur, skydiver, spinal cord injury survivor, and he is here to talk about his company story and the passion he's bringing to his community. So let me bring him on right now. Welcome, Matthew. Hi, Kendra. Uh, happy to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. We're excited you're here. So to start out, can you tell me a little bit about, you have such an interesting background. Like I actually want to learn more about all of your background and then how you got into cannabis. So can we, and CBD, sorry. Can we talk about your background a little bit and your journey to get to the point where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I guess I'll give you the cliff notes because I know we only have 30 minutes, but um, I guess uh, skydiving isn't something that I set out to do initially. Um, I actually started indoor skydiving, had no idea wind tunnels even existed. I got a gift card from my older brother, uh, and that turned into a job interview about six months later uh, when I was working for Entercom Boston. It was a, a rock radio station, so I actually sold um, advertising door to door uh, before getting into skydiving. Uh, indoor skydiving specifically. And then after uh, the wind tunnel, uh, it was about two, oh, just under two years until I eventually built up the courage uh, to do the real thing. And uh, it's, that was a wrap. And I fell in love right away. I uh, got licensed to be a, a licensed skydiver in 2012. And um, it's been a, a hell of a ride ever since. Uh, I, it's taken me, all skydiving has taken me all over the world. Um, I ended up living in Dubai uh, from 2012 to 2016. Um, that's actually where I sustained my spinal cord injury, um, not via skydiving. It was actually, I was a passenger in a car accident. And uh, move, fast forward uh, to 2016, I moved to San Diego, discovered CBD, fell in love, um, saw the massive opportunity within the industry. And more importantly, I saw a lot of the problems uh, in the industry when I began sourcing products for myself. Um, I didn't want to have, I was the type I didn't want to have to take pain pills for the rest of my life. Uh, I was looking for CBD to help manage and mitigate pain um, for my personal recovery. Um, and that's where I started to learn and uh, felt that I needed to be in this industry to, to make a difference. I have so many questions for you just based on that little <laughs> snippet. First of all, it only took you six months before you went from not really knowing what indoor skydiving was to becoming an instructor. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, wind tunnels, indoor skydiving, they prefer non skydivers cause we didn't have any bad habits, um, to retrain. Uh, so yeah, I went as a complete non skydiver, got, um, trained and began working at a wind tunnel, um, without ever having jumping out of, jumped out of an airplane. That's amazing. So I want to go into, because we will get to your company and the story and some of the things that we talked about in terms of the takeaways that I really want to provide for people who are viewing. Um, by the way, if you're watching, let us know if you're watching the replay. If you ask any questions, tag us and Matthew and I will go back and answer them for you as well. But so go back to the injury in the car accident. I know you probably don't really like talking about it. No one wants to relive that kind of stuff, but let's talk about your recovery. You were in Dubai when you were recovering or did you come back here? Pain medication, like help dive into that path a little bit that got you to where you were are today. A little bit more detail. So my, my injury happened in, I was living in Dubai. It actually, the accident, the car accident happened four days um, before I was slated to join a fully sponsored professional skydiving team. Oh my God. Um, I was actually uh, invited uh, by military members to shoot on a gun range in Abu Dhabi just days before, as a, days before I was leaving for training camp, just as a celebratory sort of thing. Uh, I used to train a lot of Navy SEALs and DOD guys uh, in wind tunnels. They brought us out there. It was on the way back from Abu Dhabi 
when we got into the car accident. It was a single car accident. Um, I was a passenger in the front seat. Uh, the driver went to pass coworkers of ours playing around, kind of drag racing on the street, ran out of road. This was poorly lit roads uh, in the deserts of Abu Dhabi and uh, ended up coming upon a, an intersection. We couldn't go straight anymore. We're doing over 120 miles uh, per hour. And uh, we launched down uh, the sand embankment, launched off a sand dune. The car rolled and uh, landed on its roof. I broke my neck in 10 places from C1 down to T4. Uh, and I was actually internally decapitated at the C5 and C6 level. So my spinal cord actually has stretch marks on it to this day. And I have a full cervical cage uh, in my spine that will never be removed. Oh so my that gosh. was a big motivating factor into me coming back to the U.S., um, and, and learning more about CBD and getting into this industry. Um, I had used cannabis and CBD as you know a youth, uh, but never really recognized the medicinal properties so much until after my injury. Um, it was just a complete game changer uh, for my quality of life. Um, and it was almost a blessing in disguise. It was, it was a very unlucky timing of the accident, but very lucky um, that it actually happened in Dubai as well, because I never received opiates. I never received the pain medications that I more than likely would have received here in the U.S. So I never gained that dependency. And I had to look and find all of the other viable uh, ways to manage and mitigate my pain and, and live healthy in order to not become a victim of this strategy, but you know, triumph over my circumstances. And... Um, yeah, it's just been an ongoing process to learn as much as I can to naturally mitigate, um, you know, my spinal trauma. And now I've learned so many other benefits that CBD helps people with as well. That's so amazing, especially when you start to look at what can come out of an injury like that and in an accident like that, right? A lot of people would accept it and take the medication and not necessarily look at finding ways to help themselves in, in unique ways and also help others. Um, one of the things that you mentioned when we were talking about takeaways and what people can learn from your story is you mentioned how you can use, and I want to read it just to make sure because it was such a, I loved how you said it, but how you can use the best parts of yourself to create a unique brand and products. So yes. when when you go from an injury like that and recovering the way you have, can you talk a little bit about how you went about um, creating flat goods? Actually, step back a second. Can you tell everybody what flat goods is, first of all? And then we'll go into the question. <laughs> no, so flock, I, I see flock goods as, as far more than just a CBD brand. Mm -hmm. um, we are a lifestyle enhancement brand. We're based around nutraceuticals. We specialize in CBD. And it was basically born from my own personal track, my own personal um, journey through rehabilitation. Um, I market and teach the five fingers uh, to live your flock life or five fingers to get flocked. And that's physical fitness, mental health, nutrition, lifestyle, and rest. And I don't claim to be an expert in any of these things, but I do know firsthand uh, quite a bit about these areas because I learned through my own uh, my own rehabilitation and my plan is actually to reach out to industry experts in each of these areas and have them on our own podcast and uh, share that knowledge with our community. That's awesome because when you start to look at first of all, I love how easy that is to remember. <laughs> well done, well done. <laughs> um. When you start to look at taking an experience like that and turning it into a lifestyle enhancement brand and company, one of the things that I, that come that, you know, when we first talked that really resonated and stood out is how, like what a, a, a bold is not really the right word, but what a bold kind of thing to be doing as skydive instructor, right? Most people aren't really even willing to take that first step to even think about it, let alone do it for your career and to take that and turn it into all, take all of these things that you've gone through and turn them into a company. Um, what was your, you know, you talked about 
how you found CBD and how you found cannabis, but what, what made you come to the realization that you could pull all these together and turn them into a company and a brand? It really was a progressive thing. And, and just, like I said, it was my life personifying the brand and it really just kind of organically came to fruition. It seems to me that the next logical choice, um, I didn't want to work in nine to five. I saw a huge opportunity in the coming CBD nutraceutical industries. I wanted to help people. I wanted to do something mean, meaningful. And I wanted to be able to fill the void because for me, skydiving was my identity. I, I, I eat, sleep, and breathe it um, all day, every day via wind tunnels, indoor skydiving, or jumping out of airplanes. I coached professionally. That's what all my friends did. I competed, traveled to events. Um, and I'm essentially now doing the same sort of thing through another vehicle that I've created, which is Flock Goods. I'm creating a community. Uh, I'm educating, and I'm traveling. And um, it's, it's just another avenue. Um, and that's why it's so dear to my heart because it really is um, all of my passions kind of combined into something that I truly believe in. And I think that everyone should be, um, if, if, if you believe in something, go for it. And that's why one of my taglines is fuel your passions, fuel your ideas, and you'll transform your world. Because skydiving for me, it, before I was a skydiver myself, I was working at a wind tunnel looking up to skydivers who were also world travelers who had passports full of stamps and I was inspired. Um, so skydiving for me really changed my whole mindset and approach to life and conquering that fear uh, and going after that goal and living the life that I saw others living that I looked up to um, seemed something worthy to create a brand around and inspire others to do the same. I'm essentially trying to give people the tools so they can help themselves in the same way that I have. Love it. Love it. And that's so powerful too. And actually while you were talking, there's one, a couple of things that I wanted to, cause you've mentioned this, that Flock Goods is your brand personified. One of the questions that I have for you is keeping, what are those personality traits, skill sets, what is it that you needed to have in order to be a successful skydiver? And what are those traits that you pulled into your company, into your brand? That's, that's a really good question. And I'm glad you asked it. I, I've really had a lot of epiphanies over that recently. Um, because for a long time, I thought that my skills as a skydiver and professional wind tunnel coach uh, we're basically deemed irrelevant now and starting out a new um, in this new industry and trying to re learn all the different things uh, that it takes to run a business. I found that a lot of the skills and traits that I had mastered through skydiving now actually did translate more than I had ever thought. Um, a lot of that was structure and organization, um, protocols and standard operating procedures. Uh, a lot of it was the human psychology. That's right, right. Yeah. People realize when you're teaching someone how to skydive or just taking someone to skydive, you are a part of their life and really reading them in their one of their most vulnerable states because they're terrified. <laughs> they're scared. And that is one of the rawest human emotions that you can experience. And I've, I've experienced that feeling and that sensation with thousands of people. So I became very intuitive, and that's helped me a lot in business as well. And then really learning through the process of my trauma, uh, working on my own personal development, I've become much more aware of my own inner strengths, my own inner weaknesses. Um, and now I'm very much focused on the things that I'm strong, areas that I'm stronger in and doing those uh, in my business and delegating the rest. And it's taken some time, but building the team um, around the areas that I am not the strongest in really has helped me, um, you know, take block to where it is today. That's awesome. And I would think that mindset would be huge, right? The mindset of helping people transform from being afraid of, of taking that literal leap to after. Mindset is everything. To me, it, mindset is crucial. Um, it's one of the most important things to master in life. For me, I think 
emotional intelligence is probably the number one skill to acquire in life. And, and, and through my trauma, the emotional intelligence that I've gained now, five years later, coming out on the other side, is what I really attest my success to. And the fact that I wasn't under the influence of opiates and pain pills um, allowed me to process that trauma and not be in a fog and really understand it and gain so much knowledge and insight from it. No, it's it's amazing. Um, now, as you're taking that and building this lifestyle brand, let's talk about your community. How are you tapping into and creating a community? Because I think I would personally think that while not everyone's sport of choice or activity of choice is going to be jumping out of airplanes and skydiving, I think that there's a lot of people that understand the call to whatever they're passionate about. So mm -hmm. can you talk about how you're taking all of that now and creating uh, this fabulous community that you're that you're creating? Well, it, I'll touch on kind of the meaning of the logo is flock flock by definition is a noun it describes the community that we're building and it's a verb we move together and that is to you know talk about the mindset the mindset of individuals who take charge of their lives and decide to be bold live tenaciously it, it doesn't mean everyone's going to throw themselves off of a cliff or out of an airplane however they can look at people who are doing that and say wow I need to at least go for a walk on the beach this weekend and put off the work that I've been stressed out to do and, and actually like live their life, right? Like go take, take your kids to the park or, you know, go see that movie or, you know, just do whatever it is that makes you, you, that you enjoy doing, like get out there and do it because life's too short and you may not have an opportunity tomorrow. So that's what it's about. It's, it's not just, uh, action sports heroes. Uh, it's all action, active lifestyle enthusiasts. Um, so you don't have to jump from airplanes or buildings, but you need to get out of the house and uh, make sure that you're living life. Mm -hmm. It's too short. No, that's great. And what are you, how are you, and you might be building this out right now. So if you are, just, just tell me, but how are you creating a platform and a, a central place for for this community and for the people with this passion to to live life in this way. We are currently building out. Uh, we have uh, an influencer uh, marketing software uh, man management system. Uh, so we're growing our influencer uh, community um, where we're highlighting other people's stories. I have a story, uh, but it's not about my story. It's about encouraging others to tell theirs. And I feel mine is really just the spark that lights the flame and, and through sharing um, my journey with others, they've been inspired to share with me and I've just, I've connected and, and heard so many powerful stories that are changing me and, and making me a better person. And I think that's what it's about. We're all trying to um, build each other up and lift each other up. Uh, and that's why the community has just been really snowballing because it's 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 about passion and belief and, and it's real and I think people recognize the gen uh the authenticity of the message and uh and that's why i think they're really inspired by it. i love it i mean and honestly it's the same reason why i love bringing on people to interview because i get to learn so much and every time i interview somebody i walk away with something new and like oh i need to research that oh i need to learn more about that oh i need to go get on the canoes this weekend oh i need to you know whatever it is um, based on whoever I'm talking to, it's always it's always great to learn and be able to share that and, and help all of you guys that are watching learn too, because hopefully you guys are taking that away as well. Um, I love the community. I love the logo meaning, right? Um, it's funny because while you were talking, I always think of skydiving as a very solo thing, right? But yet, I guess as, as you were talking, I started to think about all the different people involved in it. So yeah, it's definitely not a solo activity. No, no, it's no fun. I mean, it's fun, but it's a lot more fun when you're flying with friends and, you know, birds of a feather flock together. So uh, very appropriate. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. So one of the things that we talked about as well is how giving back can make a difference for your brand. 
Can you talk about what you're doing with Flock and, and how that's helping transform people as well? 100%. Um, I, I started a giving back program. Our aim is to give back uh, $1 for every product that we sell. And I'm giving that in product directly to spinal cord injury survivors. Um, because those are the guys and girls who need our products the most. And uh, insurance doesn't cover these things yet. And, and the more people we can, you know, inspire to help, the more people we can help. Uh, and that's what it's all about. And besides just the giving back program, I'm donating my own personal time uh, to events. We're doing community outreach, and we're really looking to grow that side of the business uh, significantly come 2020. That's awesome. I think it's so important. And I mean, there's always the marketing aspect, right? People are willing to pay a little more for products and support brands that align with what they believe in. But I think from a personal standpoint, it's always better just to to support brands that are giving back in some way, shape or form. For sure. Um, can you talk a little bit as you were building all this out? Because it what really fascinates me is that you went from completely doing something completely different to running a business, working on creating products and inspiration and community and all of these things to help inspire people. Um, can you talk a little bit about, sorry, as I was saying that I lost my train of thought where I was going with that. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that mindset in terms of jumping in, right? Because it, it is taking another leap and a different type of leap. And I really think that one thing that people who are watching, a lot of times we get asked about how to get into the industry. A lot of times we get asked by people who are curious and want to try the products and aren't sure about who to trust. I'm throwing a lot into this question, by the way, I fully realize that. Um, but we can break it out into pieces, right? So when you look at the mindset of a starting a business in this business, how did you, um, what kind of mindset did you jump into and take that leap from what you were doing before? So that's the first question. I can answer that question in four words. No risk, no rush. And it's something that I learned in skydiving. Like if you want the, if, if you want to live a certain life, if you want to do a certain activity, if you want certain things out of life, you have to be willing to take the risk. Um, and, and I think I've, I, I didn't grow up necessarily as a risk taker. I think skydiving really taught me to weigh those options and know that on the other side of fear is, is awesomeness. Yep. Um, and it was scary to start my own brand and invest all of my own capital and my, my life savings into this. But I truly believe in what I'm doing and uh, sink or swim. I'm happy with the outcome and happy and I wouldn't change anything. Um, and I think it's a matter of not getting analysis paralysis, but people just getting into this or thinking about getting into it. Um, it's, it's really easy to think about all the things that can go wrong, but why not focus on all the things that can go right? Um, and that's just kind of the mindset that I've always had. Um, especially after learning to skydive and, and really um, weigh in those, uh, those variables. So risk versus reward, no risk, no rush. Um, and I, you know, here's another skydive anal skydiving analogy. You can get analysis paralysis or you can jump and then worry about building the parachute later. And that's essentially what I did um, with my, with my, with block goods. Um, I was working, I was a full time skydiving instructor working in San Diego. Physically, I was abusing my body. This was after my injury. I knew I couldn't sustain it, um, uh, but I loved it. And I wanted to get back to where I was before the injury. So I, I accomplished that goal and I had to realize again, my own mortality and my own, um, uh, structural, uh, integrity that I, I just wasn't going to be able to put physically do skydiving as a career yeah. any longer. Um, and that's what really motivated me to transition very rapidly into the CBD space. It was all of these things coming together, my body deteriorating, me wanting to deliver this message, seeing the problems and 
and and the blatant um, just violations of human code, in my opinion. I just sourcing products for my for myself. I saw the inconsistencies, um, the 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 lack of professionalism in the industry, the um, inability for companies to produce the same product consistently. Right. Um, not being at finding a brand that I like, and then you know the next week the brand being gone, um, and, and and brands you know the, the Amazon brands selling you know great seed oil uh, with isolate and and just marketing things and making these promises and basically giving false hope and, and really making a bad image for the whole industry, and you know CBD gets this bad um, negative connotation that it's snake oil because okay. people control others expectations it's a very important uh very very powerful ingredient a very powerful nutraceutical uh but it's one powerful ingredient of many and right. that's why i think that's why, and, and it's not just the cbd that's gotten me to where i am i exercise every single day i do some form of physical therapy even to this day five years later i was two hours ago at the gym working on physical therapy uh and you know I, that's inclusive of personal development but it's the collective model approach yep. that i learned and that's what i'm teaching to people and that's what the five fingers are about it's not just about nutrition supplementation that you know cbd falls under that category yeah. but it's that collective model approach for true effectiveness and that's what we're trying to teach people is uh you know to, to do all of the things within our power um to help ourselves because there's so many things in life that we can't control. We can control our physical fitness, mental health, nutrition, lifestyle, and rest. Yep. We can greatly influence all of these things and regardless of circumstance, have a positive um, effect on our own quality of life and well-being. And that's regardless of circumstance. And I won't sit here and say that there's not people who have been dealt a really poor hand of cards um, per se, you know, a lot of people had it harder than others in life. There's life circumstance and, you know, life lottery from when they're born. Um, but everyone can, can really control those areas and, and help themselves. Absolutely. One of the things that you started to touch on that I think is really interesting. So what advice do you give to people? We're going to step back now. One of the questions I get asked the most by friends and family and people outside the industry is what CBD can they trust? What to look for? So can you please give your advice and opinion on what people should be looking for when it comes to CBD products? And then we can talk number, about your company. <laughs> the, the number one things to look for will almost answer the next question as far as what I've done with my company is, the number one things are you, you want to know the supply chain quality. Okay, where is it coming from? How is it grown? Is it lab tested? Is what is labeled on the bottle actually what's in the bottle? Um, there's a lot of companies out there, um, you know, selling hemp seed oil that actually has no cannabinoid content in there. And if my mother was to buy something like that, a product like that, I'd be pretty upset. And that, yeah. that was a motivating factor for me to decide I needed to nail down my own supply chain. Yep. Um, I needed to go directly to the sources myself. So that's what I did. I went directly to the farms. I went directly to the extracting facilities, the manufacturing facilities, the distribution facilities. And I saw and questioned the entire process. Um, so that way I can ensure that my products were of the highest quality that you can source in the United States. And I think that's the big thing that people need to look for, where regardless of the, whether they go for, for my brand or if they resonate with another brand, make sure that the, the third-party lab test results are there. Make sure that you know uh, the company is distributing these products for the right reasons. And with so many brands out there, why not give your business to someone who's giving back? Um, because it's it's not about just helping yourself or myself. It's it's about helping all of us. And I think hemp is going to be it's going to touch every aspect, um, almost every aspect of our lives and economy over the next twenty years. And I think so many people don't even realize the impact that it's going to have. 
So oh. that's the thing when, when looking for another, uh, when, when looking for a CBD product, full spectrum or broad spectrum, isolate has its um, applications, uh, but I definitely feel for, medis for, for benef medicinal benefit, full spectrum is, is gonna be the way to go. Someone takes drug tests, then they're they're gonna want to go with a broad spectrum or isolate right. based product. Right, love it. That's fantastic. Thank you, Matthew. That was great. Um, all right, we're gonna go straight from that. First of all, we're gonna go to the speed round, and then stay to the end, you guys. If you're still watching, stay to the end because there's a promo you're not gonna want to miss. So the speed round. Are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Lots of questions. Actually, there's only four questions. So the first one, and you touched on this a little bit, but can you sit up a little straighter so we can see your logo? What does your logo okay. represent? So flock is a noun. It describes our community, and it's a verb because we move together. It's about mindset, never adopting uh, the victim mentality, about taking charge of your life, being bold, living tenaciously, um, we have a hummingbird um, as our uh, company mascot, if you will. Uh, hummingbirds drink uh, sap, nectar, very similar to oil. Uh, our products are oil-based. Um, and he is upside down for two reasons. Uh, number one, he's skydiving, and he's flocking head down because flock is actually a skydiving term originally, for me at least. Flocking is movement through the sky, so you're basically like a human human meat missile, um, <laughs> but she's flocking upside down. And um, hummingbird is actually a symbol of the third eye. Oh. And he's actually coming back down to the community so he can share knowledge. And that's what those five fingers are about. We're sharing knowledge with our community so people can help themselves. And we're sifting through all the rhetoric that you see. Um, and, and we know it works because we do, a, we do it ourselves. I post daily uh, workout of the day videos because I do these things. We post recipes because that's how we actually eat. Um, so we're about that flock life and that's, you know, practicing what we preach. And everyone on my team, I have um, eight employees right now. Everyone on the team is either a skydiver or a yogi or a hike, hiking enthusiast. They're all active lifestyle enthusiasts. They're all health conscious, and we all practice what we preach. We're not just, um, you know, uh, we're not just some corporate big wigs in a skyscraper trying to capitalize on a cash grab and an emerging industry. We believe in what we're doing. We live that life, and we want to help others live their best lives as well. I love it. That's so important. I'm I'm right. noticing that we're both fighting the light. You're starting to get darker and I'm starting to get brighter. <laughs> oh, time change. Um, okay, so two more questions for the speed round and then I want to give you a chance to talk about your promo for everybody. The first question is what books, podcasts, or videos, who are you paying attention to right now? And what would you recommend? Oh my gosh, there's so many, but I mean, I guess just to name a few right off the top, I love listening to the Joe Rogan podcast. Uh, there's just so many episodes to catch up on. I don't have enough time in the day. Um, right. And with <laughs> reading, I, I, I do some reading. I listen to a lot more audiobooks. Uh, I am starting to read a little bit more. Um, Predictable Revenue is one I read most recently, and that's really been great on... Uh, kind of autonomizing my sales process. Uh, awesome. So that's really great. Um, audiobooks, I've listened to hundreds of hours of personal development, especially while I'm driving. It's just yep. a great thing to do. Uh, uh, rather than just listening, I only listen to music when I'm when I'm exercising pretty much. But uh, uh, audiobooks, I've listened to uh, Think and Grow Rich, uh, um, As a Man Thinketh, uh, Richest Man in Babylon, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, just to name a few. So, yeah, there's, uh, I'm blanking on a few. No worries. But, that's uh, a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. So many that I think is really, really valuable to just constantly be educating yourself. And it's funny because I hated school, uh, but I educate myself every day. Uh, so I think it's very, very important. That's awesome. 
Okay, my last question before we talk about one more thing is, what? Are, where is your favorite place to skydive? That's a tough one. Um, I I'm kind of torn. I'd say there's two places. One would be Hawaii. Yeah. There's like the most natural beauty that I think you can find in the world of skydiving. There's literally. Um, you know, between, I believe it's like December to March. Uh, there's whales there. There's you, you're you're literally skydiving, and I'm, I have a passenger strapped in front of me, and I say, "Hey, look, there's a whale. Hey, look, there's a rainbow, and it's raining <laughs> from behind us." And there's just like all these storm systems <laughs> and uh, weather, you know, systems going all around us, and another whale, another rainbow. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, so Hawaii, and uh, second to that, I'd say Dubai. But oh. Dubai is completely man-made. It's all um, artificial, but it's it's gorgeous. Uh, I mean, you have literally the tallest skyline in the world right in front of your landing area. You're jumping over the ocean and landing on a small peninsula that's man-made and jets out into the ocean. Um, it's just amazing. So those two places, I'd say Dubai and Hawaii were probably my two favorites. On a side note, I used to like watch Google Earth as they were building the palm tree islands and the world islands in Dubai. So the view from above when they were building all that out on Google Earth was so fascinating to watch. Oh yeah, <laughs> like and they're, they're still out. No, I don't believe it's even complete yet, but projects tend to take some time. Yeah, so, no, it was pretty funny. Okay, you guys, last. But not least, where can people find you? And let's talk about your promo. I'm going to put your information in the promo on the bottom of the screen underneath you. So you can start yep. talking about it. Awesome. Um, so you can find all of our social media handles, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. We've got a TikTok. We're not doing much on there. But all of them are at Flock Goods. Um, and then our website is also flockgoods.com. Um, and we uh, just made a promo code live for your audience of viewers, uh, and they're going to get 20% off. All you have to do is enter the promo code lock with Moda um, at the checkout, and they'll get 20% off and free shipping on their order. That is so awesome. I'm leaving it on the screen a little bit below you right now for a little bit longer. That is so awesome, Matthew. Thank you. I'm sure everyone is going to love that. It's very generous of you to do that for our viewers. So thank you very much. And thank you for your time and for being here and sharing your story. You have, like I said, you have such a fascinating background and you've made such an interesting transition to do all of these amazing things that it's, I'm really thankful that you came on to talk to us. So thank you very much. And I, um, I, yeah, are you there? Thank you so much. I really appreciate the time and you having us. Absolutely. All right, you guys watching, have a great rest of your day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.